Making a treatment decision in a stroke is easier than with multiple sclerosis. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, I want to discuss the challenges of making a risk benefit assessment and making a treatment decision in the setting of multiple sclerosis. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Let's take the concept of stroke for a second, where suddenly someone loses their ability to speak and they lose the ability to move the right side of their body, which is god awful. Now, if we rush them to the emergency department, we have a few hours where we can give a thrombolytic agent called TPA. And if we give TPA, there's a good chance that we can reverse the stroke and they can regain the ability to speak and they can regain the ability to move their arm but there are risks. There's a 12% risk of a brain bleed when you give someone TPA and a 6% risk of death. And we need to make the decision now. And very, very often they give a thumbs up and they wanna take that risk. Why? Because they're faced with the risk of the disease in the now. They're faced with the fact that if they don't intervene, they may never speak again and they may never move that side. And with the understanding of the risk of the disease, it allows them to then frame the risk of the medicine. MS is not so straightforward. In the setting of multiple sclerosis, we're asking a human to take risk as it relates to the medicine now. They have to deal with the side effect profile, the difficulties with tolerability, the risk of infection, all the risks now as they take the medicine. But the medicine isn't going to help them now because they're taking the medicine to help keep them intact 30 years from now. MS, in essence, is a 30-year stroke. Untreated, you risk ending up exactly in the same fashion as someone who had a stroke. MS is a neurologically devastating disease, but it doesn't move quickly. And so when I'm talking to, say, a 30-year-old, newly diagnosed, who has prognostic factors that scare me. Maybe they have a really active MRI or spinal cord involvement, or maybe they didn't recover from the first two attacks. I am very concerned that if we are not aggressive in the now, they may suffer severe irreversible neurological damage, which will manifest 20, 30 years from now. But it's very hard to place yourself in the mindset of, I need to do that for 30 years from now and accept the risk up front. And to make matters worse, when we're asking that otherwise healthy person to do it, they feel the best they're ever gonna feel. They're the youngest they're ever gonna be. They have the most neuroplasticity and they don't understand what's coming down the pike. Real quick before we go on, if you found some value in this video, do me a solid and give it a thumbs up. There's a saying in stroke neurology that time is brain. And that's true. And it's also true in MS neurology except the time frame is longer. It's my strong opinion that to give you the very, very best chance of living a full and meaningful life, minimally or unaffected by MS, I need you to apply the most effective disease-modifying therapy that you're comfortable taking as early as possible. If you would like to up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.